Hello, good people of Earth. It is uh, further down the road, but I'm coming back and recording this video because I want to make sure that I I put this to rest, and this will do it for me. Well, I'm still going to contact the Better Business Bureau, and I may st start a class action lawsuit. But you know, those are those are just small minor things. So this is a this is a continued rant, part two, about uh, our issues with daffodil storage. So they are the closest storage to our house, which is um, in the process of being sold. Um, they're actually, I don't know, a mile away. So we went down and we got a 10 foot storage unit, 10 by 10. It's what's advertised on their website. And I'll probably do a screenshot of that. So you see what we saw when we went to rent this unit. And I think we, we paid a couple weeks in advance because we knew we were going to get to the point where we needed it. We didn't want to have to scramble last minute. So they, they have our money. Um, because we were downsizing so much, we took the time to put uh, that blue painter's tape on the floor in a 10 by 10 square and you know, kind of pretended, okay, this is the space that we have. How are we going to put the things we need to put into this space? We put shelves in there. This is in there, our master bedroom, uh, and we, you know, we put, we tried to organize things how we thought they would be in the storage unit, right? Trying to maximize the space, uh, just because we had a lot of stuff to get rid of and a lot of stuff we didn't have an idea of what was going to happen. Um, formal introduction to Lady Kai. Say hi to the people. This is Lady Kai Wynette. She is the sweetest of our two cats. Hopefully she doesn't knock down the camera. Um, so we were so the day before we were supposed to move in, we I called up and said we're moving into I don't know unit C one thirty nine or something like that tomorrow, and I want to make sure that our request for the truck, the free truck that comes with the move in, is set aside, and what time can we pick it up, and all that stuff. And they did not show that we had a truck rental. Um, so I panicked a little bit. Uh, I got transferred around to a couple different people. Finally ended up with this guy. Um, Slater at Penske Truck. And I guess this particular daffodil storage is affiliated with Penske Truck or it's their lot or I'm not sure the relationship. Um, but this guy's attitude was exactly what I expect out of customer service. He said, I'm sorry, sir, I don't see a reservation for you. Could it be under another name? So we tried a couple things real quick and he said, let's, let's get this taken care of from a different angle. What size truck do you need? So I, I said, I don't know. I gave him a bunch of details. He said, okay, so we have a truck ready for you. It'll be ready tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Now let's see what we can do about finding that reservation because if it's out there, then, you know, let's use that because that's pre-set up. So this guy's attitude was, let's solve the problem and then backwards figure out what's going on, what happened, what, what went wrong. Um, in my parlance, that is called a post-mortem. You fix the problem, then you work backwards to figure out what, what where the pieces fell apart. Um, that went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And finally, we figured out that the per first person that I talked to at Daffodil Storage didn't understand that we were renting the free truck for move-in. Not sure how that happens. It's advertised on their site. A normal thing, I would think. I, I would think a good, maybe 50% of the people that move in use a free truck, or maybe, maybe 30, I don't know, but it shouldn't be an unusual thing. So we're a little frustrated. Um, the day before, um, we go down, I. I go down to view the particular unit. So I'm kind of backtracking in time. Don't worry, I'll edit this out so it's in the correct sequence. Don't worry about it. Um, and the unit measures nine foot by nine foot. Okay. We rented a 10 by 10. I thought there was a mistake. So we call the office. They say, no, the sizes are approximate. I, I No, sizes, that's not approximate. That's not close enough. Um, 10 by 10 is not nine by nine. If I do the math correctly on that, I think that's 19% smaller. 19% is not approximate. If that's approximate, then you're okay with me taking off 15% off my bill. And of course that didn't go over very well. 
um, so 10 by 10 is um, 100 feet square um, and cubed. I've got notes on this to try and make sure that I don't sound like a complete idiot. But apparently those notes did not transfer over because I have cuss words in here and I promised I wasn't going to use cuss words in this video. Um, so uh, essentially we, we ended up in a different unit and that measured 9 foot by 9 cent. <laughs> Hey, 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 that's not even your food. I'll edit that out too. Um, it, we were just, it was too late in the game. We were too frustrated. We just, it was, ha everything was happening the next day. So we didn't worry about it. Nine, seven, we're, we'll make it fit. We'll stack it to the gills. Um, so my premise here and why I'm making a video and attacking daffodil storage for their practices is I believe I only have two instances to, to pull from this, but I truly, honestly believe that they are intentionally shorting people on space. I think they rent 10 by 10s and the actual space is not 10 by 10. Um, if you do the math on this, let's say they have uh, 60 or six rows of four, uh, 40. So they're looking at taking a foot off each length I think that if my math is correct, that gives them another 10 spaces to rent times six rows. That's 24 additional storage units by just shafting everybody for one square foot, one foot on each side. It could get more complicated than that, but that's essentially what I think they're doing. I think they're intentionally making the spaces smaller, um, advertising it as a standard size, selling it as a certain size, but delivering short. So they shorted me by 19%. Um, when I walked into the unit, I could tell that it was not correct. I'm not great with spaces, but I pulled out a measuring tape and it was nine by nine, not even nine, two by nine, two. It was nine by nine. Okay. So maybe they're measuring by the outside wall. The walls are not a foot thick. This is BS. It's straight BS. Um, I did find an article that talked about, it was the storage unit talking about how close you can get an approximate before it becomes a problem. It was a moral ethical issue that they were dealing with. Um, there wasn't any conclusions drawn because the, obviously the writer of this article didn't want to be held to the fire saying, well, you said we could do this. And Okay. So we're upset and, and feeling shafted by daffodil storage going into this next day which is when we're packing up most of our stuff to move to the storage unit um, so we have the uh estate sale company which i will name by name and give a full review they were flipping awesome um we have uh, a liquidator that's coming to get some of the stuff that that was not going to sell at the estate sale we have people that have purchased things from from listings from the estate sale they're there to pick up some of the larger items so it's kind of a chaotic day, um, trying real hard to get this van loaded correctly so that we can get it correct. Oh, oh, so let me back up just a little bit. Or maybe I should edit this out. So I went and picked up the storage unit at daffod a different daffodil storage location. There's two really close by. Um, and the truck was not in great shape. It's got dents all on every single side and scratches. There's no way that you could, um, using a little you know rental form, call out all of the damage on the truck it's just uh, on the van it's not happening it, it would take you 45 minutes to an hour to like map out where all the damage was it's still it's a functional truck it's free grain of salt we're gonna go with it so we drove um from memory because my notes are really lousy uh i think it's 1.8 miles from where we picked up the truck to the house Parked it right in the front yard, in the grass, right over where um, my daughter, my bonus daughter, our daughter, our bonus daughter normally park. It's in the grass that I used to mow on a regular basis, um, I, on streets that I've driven on a regular basis. So yeah, I'm not doing anything crazy or unusual. So we're, we're dealing with all of this chaos in the house. We get everything loaded in. Um, we're on a little bit of a time crunch for two different reasons. One... Uh, my former co-worker and, and uh, buddy, Corey, gave us tickets to go see Seattle Kraken hockey team. This would be my first 
NHL game. Kind of a big deal. It's a new team. I'm getting behind it. I want to support. Uh, yes, I'm a crackhead. And then we also had the limitation of getting the truck back on time or we lost our $150 deposit. So I do a walk around from the truck because I want to make sure that nothing's underneath the truck or nothing, you know, everything's okay. And on the back passenger side, dually tires, the outside dually tire is flat. Um, not a little bit flat, not low, but flat. Um, I feel around and I don't see anything, but it's it's obvious. It's a big deal. So Sailor hops on the phone with Daffodil and is explaining, you know, what do you want us to do? How do we how do we solve this? You know, we've got a truck sitting in our front yard. We're supposed to have it back by five o'clock. Um, we've scheduled to move in for our storage unit through you guys. Um, and the lady that she talked to just didn't didn't have any experience. She said, let me find out what, what we can do, what we're supposed to do. I've never dealt with this before. I'll call you back. So in the meantime, I'm, I'm starting to panic because we've got a deadline. Um, Sailor Pole has a, a you know, cigarette power, battery powered um, tire inflator. Um, so we hook that up to the tire. Maybe we can get some tire, some air in this and get it somewhere, get it, turn, get it turned back in, get it to the storage unit, at least get our stuff out of it. Um, we get a call back from Kent, who identifies himself as the district manager of Daffodil Storage. And I'm calling him out by name because I'm, I'm still underwhelmed and quite upset by the lack of empathy, lack of customer service, and total just buzz off attitude that we got from him. So we, could, we explained, you know, we've got We've got a truck full of our stuff. We've got a flat tire. He says that, and one of the reasons why I don't edit things out is because I have no idea where I was. Um, I believe I was talking to talking about Kent and Kent's failure um, in his position. So he said that uh, roadside assistance would not be there till Monday. This was Saturday, and that we needed to return the keys to the truck. So we're gonna have a van with let's let's call. 50% of our belongings sitting in our front yard, drivable, right? Because it's it's only one of the dually tires is flat. And he wants us to give them the keys to the truck. So I explained, you know, I work right around the corner and roadside assistance can get here. I can be there. I'm not, I can't, I'm not, I can't give you the keys. Um, cause my stuff's in there. And he says, well, you could lock up the back. I said, yeah, that's, that's a given, but I'm not giving someone the ability to drive away with my stuff. That's just not going to happen. This isn't a, this isn't a valid solution. Um, and there was, there was a, a tone in his voice. Like we bothered him. I don't know. You're a district manager. I'm assuming you're, you're getting paid to do the job. Um, and if a phone call on a Saturday is too much, maybe you need to find another line of work. Um, maybe fast food because they tend to be rude as well. So then he, he off the cuff kind of mentions that uh, we've lost our, we're going to lose our $150 deposit. And that was it. That legitimately for me was the final straw. Um, I've read the contract. I know that um, we are 100% responsible for collision damage. Um, but we are not responsible for any other damage. So I went with the assumption that he meant because we were going to return the van late, we were going to lose our $150. So um, I'm not entirely proud of this. I've worked really hard to become a much more mellow person. Um, but I basically said, if you're going to charge us $150 for the inconvenience that was not caused by us, because your van is in bad, in poor maintenance, or even if it's an accident, even if we picked up this screw or nail or whatever, you're not going to give us, you know, even a little bit of charity or empathy because our this is going bad really quickly. Then I'm going to get my hundred and fifty dollars worth out of the damage to the truck. And I heard him say what. And I said, I'm going to go get my sledgehammer and I'm going to do what the best I can to take the back of this truck off. I'm just going to go at it with a, a sledgehammer. 
So feel free to come pick up your damn truck whenever you want. And my volume of my voice went higher and higher as I was speaking to him and Sailor's trying to calm me down. At the same time, she's furious at this guy. Um, and it just escalated. I'm in the middle of my front yard. I'm exhausted because I haven't slept. I'm stressed out because I'm selling my house and doing this crazy adventure. And basically Kent is treating us like trash. There was zero empathy. No, there wasn't even a, oh, I'm I'm so sorry. We we're not gonna be able to get roadside assistance to Monday. It was like, roadside's not gonna be there till Monday. It was this matter of fact, well, yeah, we don't care. It's not our problem. You're you're just screwed and I'm sorry. Yeah, there was no sorry. There was no even, even attempt in his voice. And that would have changed the dynamics of the conversation, right? We all know that when you're talking to someone and you start off with a sincere apology, even if it's not your fault, you're setting you're setting a, a level of empathy in that discussion. I'm sorry. Not necessarily that I did anything wrong, but I'm sorry that this is happening. That was absent. But maybe he's good with numbers. He's crappy with people. Kent. So, someone had the brilliant idea Certainly wasn't me, because there was nothing brilliant coming out of my head at the time. And this is why I don't like getting angry, uh, because I know that my cognitive functions drop immediately. I think that's natural, but you know, maybe not. Um, I think it was Sailor came up with the idea, well, let's just take the truck to Les Schwab and get the tire fixed, and maybe we can get it all taken care of by then. Brilliant idea. And that's what we did. Um, so the, the tire inflator would not reach from the cigarette lighter um, in the van to the tire. So we used whatever, the onboard battery, and we drained it. Um, so the tire was not to full pressure. Um, we drove it the maybe a mile to Daffodil Storage on Gem Heights. Um, got that puppy unloaded as quick as we possibly could. Whatever plans we may have had about having that organized correctly completely went out the window. We were on time crunch mode. Um, Sailor got picked up and went back to the house. I drove the truck to Daffodil Store or to Les Schwab, which is was it was not that far away. It's right around the corner, um, and begged and pleaded and used whatever persuasive skills I had and let them know I've got, I've got to have this truck back as soon as you can. I've got to, you know, it's like four o'clock or something like that, or three 30. I've got to get this to back to U-Haul or they're going to charge me 150 bucks. And if they charge me 150 bucks, I might as well just abandon the truck in the woods. Um, I'm trying to be funny about it, but I'm just still, I'm seeing red. Um, I didn't understand for a long time what that bent and it's actually everything is red it, everything's got a blood tinge to it and this the the gal and i didn't get her name the lady at les schwab was just awesome she said we're super packed we're super booked um, i'll try and get you jumped in line as quickly as i can but i can't promise i said just promise me you'll give it a shot and i'll be happy with that i'll be happy with the results because that's all i want is it's all i wanted from kent was just a little bit of effort um and of course she hustled and I think she switched, moved a couple of people around and got us out. Um, I drove as close to the speed limit as I possibly could manage to get the van back to Daffodil. We checked it in. Oh, there's a whole part that I meant, I forgot to mention. I really should edit this stuff, but I'm not going to because it takes too much time. When we got the van to the house, I know I'm leaving out some good stuff. And, you know, it's like a pause. I should pause this one and make a part three. The ramp, the ro the well that holds the roller to the ramp that comes out of the back of this truck was completely rusted and busted off. So, and it, this wasn't new damage, this was obvious damage. Um, it, was, it was atrocious. Um, I actually had to lift up the entire ramp up above the lip um, of the rider to get it to come out. Um, so the, the truck was just, it was just beat up. It was in bad shape. Okay, so. We're returning the truck to where we picked it up several hours before, um, and I explained to the gal, you know, you know, I this is this is what's going on. Your district manager's a tool. 
um, and just went through all of the, the things that had happened. And I know that it's not her fault. And I told her if, you know, if I'm coming across angry, it's not because I'm not angry at you. It's just, I'm angry at the frustration, at the situation. Um, so, and I said, and I need to show you something. So, you know, that when a tech sees this, that I didn't do this. So we go out and look at the, at the, um, at the ramp and she goes, no, there, that's a, a rust on all parts of that. That's definitely happened before you picked it up. So she was super nice. Um, I don't think that was her regular, that was part of her regular gig, what she regularly did for Daffodil. Um, I did advise her to try to work for a different company because she did have customer service skills. Um, if I had my way, I would um, fire Kent um, and put that lady, I think her name was Leah. I think it was Leah and, and put her as the district manager whatever skill set she has she has one that's more important than everything else and is caring about the customer so um she she recognized that you know we didn't cause this i um showed her the bolt that les schwab provided that was uh significantly worn down i'm gonna try and snap that in here um in the stream of this video if i can figure out how to do that i am really technically inclined so I'm not sure why I, I don't want to do all this work um, so she gave us our deposit back and we made the game and I will never go to daffodil storage